The first time I walked into my local gear shop to buy a compass, I found myself really overwhelmed by all of the different features offered on compasses. The reason compasses are so complicated and can seem overwhelming is because they do a lot more than just point to north. Right now, I want to talk about all the different features offered on compasses and help you make the decision to find the compass that's best for you. Most compasses um, are going to have a base plate and that gives you a flat surface to place your compass while you're using it on the ground um, or even sometimes holding it in the air. Base plates a lot of times will have some scales on the sides. Some have universal transverse mercator lines on them, again to help you pinpoint your location. This base plate has a magnifying glass which can be really useful when I'm reading tight contour lines. The black arrow down the center of the base plate is your direction of travel arrow. So it gives you something to follow as you're using your compass while shooting a bearing. The circular area at the top of the compass is your compass housing or the bezel. Within it, you're going to have a red magnetic north arrow that moves of its own accord. So you can't control the direction of that arrow. It's always going to point to magnetic north. The arrow inside here that you can control is called the orienting arrow. And that's the hollow red arrow that you can move around 360 degrees. Uh, the degree markers are on the outside edge of your compass housing and then inside this compass housing I've got some additional degree markers and declination lines to help me be more accurate when I orient my map, something we'll talk about a little bit later. Now on the other end of the spectrum, you've got compasses with a few more bells and whistles like this one. On the base plate, it's got all the different types of scale options, a magnifying glass and a level so I can tell if I'm holding my compass accurately. And then I've got a mirror on the top. The mirror helps me when I'm shooting a bearing off of the landscape. If you're going to be traveling in an area where you need to shoot a bearing over a long distance, like in the open desert, uh, then the mirror can be really useful. Other than that, I've found that the mirror kind of adds a little bit of weight to my compass and could potentially break on me, giving me some broken glass to carry out of the backcountry. Now, you will find compasses that are a little more simple than the ones that I've shown here. Those compasses sometimes come as part of a keychain or a little add on to your backpack. I would stay away from those compasses just because for our purposes of backcountry navigation, you really need a compass where you can move the housing and that has a base plate to help you shoot straight lines. Anything more simple than that is really just going to point north. And as I said before, you want to be able to do a lot more with your compass than just tell which direction you're traveling. A couple more things to note about compasses. If you see a bubble within the housing of your compass, don't freak out, your compass isn't broken. The bubble needs to be there for your magnetic north arrow to work properly. If you're going to be traveling for long distances or for a really long time, then you might consider purchasing a compass that allows you to set the declination and just leave it there. That way you don't have to fiddle with the declination every time you take out your compass. Whenever you use your compass, you need to make sure to hold it perfectly flat and level. That way the north arrow can move right. Another thing that might interfere with the travel of your north arrow is if it's near metal. So keep it away from any metal objects that you might be carrying with you in the backcountry.